a very simple topic. We'll finish it off quickly. So come to chapter number nine. Financial statements for financial statements of not-for-profit organizations. Please tell me first of all, what do you mean by not-for-profit organization? Section 25 was old act, no? Section 8, I don't know the new act you are saying, I am just going by it. The old act provided, if a company is about to be formed for the purpose of promotion of commerce, art, science, religion, charity, sports, or any other public purpose, and by its memorandum of association, it has prohibited the declaration of dividend, surplus if any from activities is going to be used only for promotion of its activities. Such companies can apply to the central government and if the central government is satisfied but based on certain rules and conditions, the central government can grant a license and with the help of this license, the company can get registered and it need not use the word limited as a part of its name. But if, what are the terms and conditions which the central government prescribes? Profits, if any, of the organization cannot be declared as dividends. They have to be used only for promotion of the activities for which the license was granted. Okay. Not only that, not only that, the members of the company, they cannot draw any salary, remuneration, etc. They have to work for the company only for the sake of honor. If they have incurred expenses out of their pockets, if the members have incurred any expenses out of their pockets, then the company can reimburse those expenses. If the members have provided their premises to the organization, they can ask for reasonable and proper rent. Not unreasonable, reasonable and proper rent. And remuneration can be paid to a member only with the permission of the central government. So, funds of the organization have to be used only for, you can say, promotion of the activities for which it was registered. What was it? Promotion of commerce, art, science, religion, charity, sports, or any other public purpose. That is a not-for-profit organization and section 25 also says if you are violating any of the conditions which have been prescribed by the central government, the license is bound to be cancelled but before they cancel they will give you an opportunity of being heard. That is what the act provides. If they want to make any changes in their memorandum of association, it has to be done with prior approval of the central government. And central government when it is giving approval, it can impose certain additional conditions. Okay? And Section 25 also provided that when such companies are dissolved, if anything is left in the company, it will be donated to a similar organization. So this is what Section 25 provided. Company side. So if you are running a not-for-profit organization, you can register it as a trust. Every state has its own act to control the activities of a trust. Or you can register it as a society, constitution. Constitution means under which law you want to work. There is an act called as the Bombay Public Trust Act. So under that act you can register your trust or you have to run it as a society, an association of persons and get it registered as a society under the Societies Act of each state. Every state has its own Societies Act. So how to run a society? Based on the state act you can register your society and run your organization. Or another way is, professional way is, register a section 25 company, old act, section 8, the new act. I don't know, I don't know the correct number act, we have not gone to the new act because I am not teaching company law anymore. So, you get registered under the company's act and you register it as a company and run the business as a company. Section 25 or section 8 is a good way because the Activities of the organizations are regulated by the company side. The central government will control, will regulate the activities of such organizations. And company law is strict, professional way of carrying on the business of an organization. So today I think many uh, 
non for profit organizations are getting registered at, as section 25 company and one more advantage is if you get registered as section 8 or section 25 company it is very easy to get exemption certificate from the income tax department also under section 10 section 10 you have an exemption no section 10 11 12 30 talk about trust so if you have registered under section 25 section 8 you have to approach the assessing officer the uh, assessing officer not the assessing officer i think the commissioner of your particular uh, area you have to approach him and if you can prove that sir i have got registered as section 8 company then you consider that yes it is a company which is really formed for non for profit organization because central government has already given a license to get registered as section 8 company no? but is not bound by it but it definitely give more weightage if it is already registered as a section 8 company it is very easy for you to get that exemption letter from the income tax department and then you can start raising donations and give ATG benefit to the person who has actually given donations. You know ATG benefit. So if you are giving money for registered charitable organizations, then in such cases they will render the donator a receipt. And based on that receipt you can claim uh, deduction in your uh, income tax. While you are computing the income tax, you can claim some deduction. Some organization will give you 100%. Some organization will give you 50%. No, I don't know whether it is more than 100 percent. 150. So scientific research is on section 35, 36, 37 of the Income Tax Act. 35. So it is not a donation you are giving. It's a contribution there. It's a business expenditure there for you. Here it is a donation. So this is how not-for-profit organizations are formed. You either get it registered as a trust or you register it as a society or you register it as a section 8 company if you register it as a section 8 company you know, so we have to learn about accounting for companies then so we are now going to learn about how to do accounting in the books of non-for-profit organization registered as a society or registered as a trust how are you going to do accounting in their books of accounts now please tell me non-for-profit organization is started for some public purpose the public purpose can be can you give me examples of non-for-profit organizations? You have an organization near near Lakhdiga Pool, TAPCI, F-A-P-C-C-C-I. It's a chamber of commerce. What do you mean by chamber of commerce? You also have one more organization you would have heard lot of times in the television, ASOCHAM, Association of Software Companies and PPO or KPO service providers. NASCOM, SOCHAM, FAPSI, these are all guilds or we can call them as chambers of commerce. It's an association of businessmen. SOCHAM, NASCOM is an association of businessmen who are involved in the business of providing software services, PPO services, KPO services. So those organizations they form an association and through that association whatever policy changes they want from the government they are going to send those recommendations to the government through that association. The government is going to talk with the association what the industry wants, what are the tax measures they want, what are the tax shops they want, or what is the policy they want from the point of view of the government. They form associations so that it is easy for them to uh, do lobbying with the government. Okay? So they are also not-for-profit organizations. Asocham, NASCOM, FAPSI, these are all not-for-profit organizations. Why? Their objective is not to make profit, it is to work for the betterment of the industry. For the, we can say, the benefit of all the members of the particular association. So it is for public purpose only, we can say. Rotary Club. Have you heard about Rotary Club? Can anybody tell me what Rotary Club does? Red Cross. Red Cross Society. You have St. Mary School, just behind this building. There is a street behind this building. You have a St. Mary's High School. I think you would have seen many such, uh, we can say, Christian charity schools all over Hyderabad. You have many such schools, no? You have St. Paul's, you have St. Anne's, you have Wesley, you have... So, what are these colleges? These are all not-for-profit educational institutions which are run as charitable organizations. Now, Jim Club, 
स्पोर्ट्स क्लब स्पोर्ट्स एसोसिएशन दीसीआई इज एन एसोसिएशन विच इज फॉर्म फॉर दर्पज ऑफ अपलिफ्टमेंट ऑफ द गेम ऑफ क्रिकेट इन अवर कंट्री सो यू हैव मेनी सच एसोसिएशन विच आर एक्चुअली वर्किंग फॉर पब्लिक पर्पजेस बट एन बी सी बीसीआई वी डोट बी दैट इज अ Non for profit organization, pakka for profit organization. So what the income tax has done is now they are saying if you are carrying on a business as part of your charitable activity, on that business whatever profits you are earning you pay tax. They are asking now if a charitable organization is doing some business or business activity and earning profits out of it, they are saying you pay tax on the profits and then use the remaining proceeds for your charitable purposes. That is actually a that is actually a welcome we can say uh, amendment in the act. It happened I think three four years ago. If this doesn't happen, no, what will happen is many organizations are started as non for profit organization. But when you public see see they say boss this is a pakka commercial organization. And law should be we should go by the understanding of a normal human being. No court whenever it is interpreting certain things they will take the view of a Normal man, the normal man feels an organization is profit organization. Then the law will also treat it as a profit organization only. Is it clear? So, if you want examples of not-for-profit organization, you can see educational institutions, colleges, which are not for profit. You have clubs, Rotary Club, Red Cross Society, etc. They do some charity activities. Then you have sports associations. Which are formed for the upliftment of that particular sport. You have football association, you have the tennis association, you have the cricket association. I don't remember the names. Okay. Then I think Hyderabad we have HCA, the Hyderabad Cricket Association. So these are associations formed for benefit of sports. Then you have uh, health organizations also, hospitals. charitable uh, we can say uh, hospitals which provide medical and healthcare services to people at a very concessional rate or sometimes for free also so now these are all not for profit organization so please tell me for them what is the major source of revenue for act running any activity you need money paisa donation so for not for profit organization the major source of revenue is donation that means they go begging or they go to people who are rich people or they go approach people and tell them about their activities and try to get a donation okay and what the income tax department has done is to help these organizations they are giving some deduction exemption to the person who is actually donating money okay <coughs> so that is one major source now donations they can receive of many types general donation If you are running an institution, somebody rich comes to your school or college. You tell him that boss, we need a donation. He writes a check and gives it to you and goes away. It can happen. Or an alumni of the school or an alumni of the college has become very rich and famous. He wants to do something for the school or the college. He writes a big check and gives it to the college and goes away without any specific direction. How that funds have to be used? It is going to be treated as revenue for the school or the college and used for meeting the regular expense of the school or college for making payment of salaries, payment of rents, uh, meeting all the regular expenses. Suppose that guy says, "I am writing a check for one crore. Please construct a new building out of it, or build construct a hostel building for students who are coming out of station. They are facing a lot of problems. So I want to donate money for construction of a building. It's a specific donation. In such a case, it cannot be treated as." Revenue it cannot be used to meet your regular general expenses. You have to treat it as a separate fund, and the fund has to be used only for that particular purpose, that is construction of the building. So if it's a donation without any conditions attached, treat it as revenue. If it is donation which comes with a condition attached to it, then you have to treat it as a fund. So it as a separate source in the balance sheet, and you have to keep those funds in earmarked investments. You have to keep the funds either in a separate bank account. Or you have to buy securities, shares, debentures, and keep the funds separately in investments. You cannot keep the money idle, no. So you keep the money in investments, 
and whenever we are able to execute that purpose for which donation was given, so securities investments can be sold and money can be used to complete that activity for which the donation was given. Okay. Any other source of revenue? Membership fees. In the case of clubs, in the case of you can say sports associations, etc. If you don't pay your annual subscription, your annual membership fees, you are not entitled to enjoy the services of the club. As chartered accountants, we also pay because even though chartered account, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India is not a, we can say a trust or a society. It is uh, set up under a separate act, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. But still, we have to pay every year membership fees. If you don't pay the membership fees, no, the name of the chartered accountant will be removed from the list of members. If he is not paying his COP fees, certificate of practice fees, his COP will be removed and we don't receive the benefits of being a member of the organization. If you are a member of a Rotary Club, you have to pay your uh, your membership fees every year. The so sports organization, if you want to go and continuously use the facility of the stadium, uh, spending time in that stadium, so some facilities will provide to members. So if you don't pay that, you are not going to get that service. So regularly some subscription fees, membership fees is also collected by the not-for-profit organization. It's also a source of revenue for the not-for-profit organization. Are you able to understand? Apart from that, you can also have sometimes entrance fees. When a new member is taken into the association, a new member joins, the trust or the society may charge some entrance fees. If it's a big amount, then we are going to treat it as a capital receipt. We are not going to treat it as a revenue receipt. We are not going to credit it to the PNL account or the income and expenditure account. We are going to treat it as part of capital, capital receipt, and we are going to use it for, you can say, other purposes. If it is a small amount, entrance fee, a very nominal amount is charged, then in such case, we can take it as part of revenue. Is it clear? So we can say normally, these are the major sources of revenue. Not only that, if you are running a Suppose an education institution and you give your hall, auditorium on rent to others for a few days, you get some revenue. These are all miscellaneous incomes that can also come sometimes. Uh, if you are running a sports organization, you give your stadium for one day or two days rent for swearing in ceremony of chief minister, the prime minister, the president, or for conducting the AGM of a company. You know, AGM of Reliance Industries is held at Bankhede Stadium. Yes, and I think now even the new chief minister is, yeah. I think he had his, oh, I thought oh, yeah. yeah. he was also at Bankade or Brown? Bankade. So they may get some rent for that particular one day or two days, they can get it as rent. That be a source of income. If you are running a library, you charge some monthly fees for people who want to enjoy the services of your library. They will pay you monthly fees, etc., which will be treated as income. Sometimes non members are also allowed to take the benefit of these services. So, non members will keep paying you some money with that, we can get some revenue. So, there are many other sources. If you are running a hospital, charity means doesn't mean everything has to be free. If you provide a huge discount, then in such case, they will pay some amount, the patients may pay some amount, that will be revenue for the organization. So, there are many sources of revenue. Expenditure. Cost of maintaining your activity, cost of doing your activity will be treated as expenditure. Okay. Now, how to account for the transactions of not-for-profit organization is what we are going to discuss in this particular chapter. Okay. So, before we go into accounting for not-for-profit organization, I will again try to revise what we have discussed already in chapter single entry. Remember, how to calculate income to be recognized in the profit and loss account how to calculate the amount of expenditure to be recognized in the profit and loss account, how to calculate the amount of cash received towards income, how to calculate amount of income received during the year. You remember, let us revise those things again because we are going to use those concepts again in this particular chapter. So right now, format of expense account. Now I have forgotten completely the format of expense account. So you have to help me out. This I remember. After this I don't remember anything.
फॉर्मेट ऑफ एक्सपेंस अकाउंट सी वी आर गोइंग टू हैंडल मी टू टाइप्स ऑफ प्रॉब्लम इन दिस चैप्टर वन यू बी गिवेन समरी ऑफ दी कैश बुक बैंक बुक एंड यू बी गिवेन इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट सर्टेन एसेट्स एंड लाइबिलिटीज With that receipts and payments account, summary of cash and bank book is nothing but called as receipts and payments account. To be given receipts and payments account, with the help of receipts and payments account, you are expected to prepare the P and L account. P and L account he, in this chapter is called as the income and expenditure account, and you have to build a balance sheet. So to be given summary of the cash book. With that you have to build income and expenditure account and also the balance sheet. Our second type of problems. You will be given income and expenditure account. You have to build receipts and payments account. You will be given income and expenditure account. You will be given opening balance sheet, closing balance sheet. You will be asked to build the receipts and payments account. Listen to me. This chapter is about traveling between two things, from cash concept to accrual, and you should be able to come back from accrual to cash. Remember cash and accrual. So you have to travel from cash concept to accrual. and sometimes come back from accrual to cash that we that is what we are going to discuss in this chapter so if you want to travel from cash to accrual accrual to cash you should know first of all the route properly so we are going to route discuss the route properly first then we'll apply and we are solving our problem so tell me the format of expense account where that is said to opening prepaid I don't know whatever you say right. By opening somebody has something to say at the end. Ravan. Ravan. Everyone has his own priorities. Next, after outstanding opening, we will be out opening outstanding. Two cash or bank. What is this? Amount paid. Only amount paid, not expense paid. Amount paid. Then, you don't get buy pay until immediately, no? Two closing outstanding. to closing outstanding expenses by closing prepaid by closing prepaid by i want everyone to answer it's not for you for by pnl account what is it By P and L account, I know this is balancing figure, but what is the meaning? Expense recognized. So expense recognized. Suppose you are given this, this, this. This and this. This is balancing figure. You are given this, 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 this and this. Then this should be balancing figure. Can you show this in the form of a statement? Yes. Tell me how to calculate that. Expense recognized. Amount paid. Now you people will feel as if you know everything. But when it comes to the solving of a problem, no. Add. That is how I told you. Add closing outstanding. Less closing prepaid. Less opening outstanding. Add opening prepaid. Thanks for reminding. Reminding. What do we get now? 
bracket. Amount of expense recognized. of expense to be recognized. Now, if you want to calculate this from this information, tell me how do we calculate? Amount paid. How will you start? Expense recognized. Minus Opening prepaid plus opening opening outstanding plus closing prepaid less closing outstanding. What do we get? Amount paid. Please note it down everyone. Did you are complete? Next, format of income account. Format of the income account. Income account. Tell me the format of the income account now. Two income receivable. Two opening receivable. Income receivable account shows the debit balance. At the beginning of the year, the account is closed and debited to income account. Next. 
income received in advance at the beginning of the year. It shows a credit balance. The account is closed and the credit is given to the income account. Next. Why? When you collect income during the year, when you collect an amount, by cash or bank. Amount of income collected during the year. Next. If there is some accrued income, income receivable at the end, you pass an entry. Income receivable account at R2, income account. So income account is credited by income receivable. by income receivable. Where do you show income received in advance at the end of the year? Out of the amount collected during the year, some amount was collected in advance. We have to remove it. We cannot show it as income. What is it to be right? Income account data to income received in advance account. To income received in advance at the end now what will be the balancing figure in this account be transfer to profit and loss account to p and l account balancing figure income Recognize. Similarly, let us prepare a statement also. Now, look at the board, everyone. If you are given this cash collected. Opening advance, opening receivable, closing receivable, closing advance. You can calculate income recognized as balancing figure. If you are given this, 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 this and this, cash collected will be balancing figure. Okay. Now let us prepare a statement also how to calculate income recognized. Statement showing income recognized. How will you start? Cash collected. The amount which is collected. Add receivable or accrued at the end minus received in advance at the end Cash collected, add receivable or accrued at the end, less received in advance at the end, then less receivable, receivable or accrued at the beginning. Add received in advance at the beginning. Received in advance is also called as unapproved income. Income recognized.
from this statement, sometimes you will also be asked to calculate cash collected in not-for-profit organization problems. You will be given sometimes cash book. You have to arrive at the figure to be included in the income and expenditure account. Sometimes you are given income and expenditure account. You have to arrive at the figure which is given in the cash book. So you should be able to travel from cash to accrual, accrual to cash. Cash payment may not be equal to the expense recognized because of the existence of prepaid, outstanding, opening prepaid, opening outstanding. Next. Statement showing. Cash collected. Cash here means not only physical cash, it may be through check also. Statement showing cash collected. How will you start now? Income recognized. This is as per approval. Income recognized. Go in the reverse direction. Less received in advance beginning. Add receivable or accrued at the beginning receivable or accrued at the beginning add received in advance at the end received in advance at the end I am just going in the reverse direction and changing signs minus receivable or accrued at the end you will get income cash collected cash collected during the period. Complete. So take five minutes time. After that, we'll do some problems. <laughs> 